Tony Martinez. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm going to talk to you all today about resilience. This is something, um, a topic that was requested, and hopefully you all get some good takeaways after today. Um, I generally like to have some participation. It's not as fun when I'm just talking at you, so feel free to raise your hand, ask questions, provide any feedback as we go along. Sound good? Okay, great. So before I get into my resilience workshop, I want to chat a little bit about our services. A show of hands, who has heard of the Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion? Some of you. Okay. So um, we are located on the third floor of the Student Center right in this building, and it's above Zot and Go. A few things that we offer are workshops just like this one today. If you are a campus leader, if you belong to um, an organization and you want any of our managers to come and speak on topics, we're happy to do that. Um, we also provide one-on-one -on -one consultations as well. And then we have volunteer and internship opportunities if anyone is looking to get more involved on campus. So we also have a condom co-op. It's 10 free condoms per student per day. We also have free lube, free dental dams as well. All you have to do is come and show your student ID. We don't write down your information. We don't have any paperwork. Um, just flash us your ID and you'll get your free condoms. We have a lactation station. If any um, parents or caregivers are nursing or feeding their babies. And then the best thing that we have, in my opinion, is the wellness room with massage chairs. This is probably our most popular service. Um, it is a room that is technology free. The lighting is nice and dim. There's a tea station. There's really comfortable bean bags. Sometimes students just come in and take a nap, but it's a really good place to come and just unplug if you want a break from studying or from uh, going to class or anything like that. Just a reminder where we're located, we're on the third floor of the Student Center. We're open Monday through Friday, normal business hours, eight to five, and all of our services are free. So you actually already paid for them in your student fees. What I always tell students is before you graduate, come by at least once. This is a great resource for you all to help improve your mental health and your well-being. So please take advantage of it. Uh, don't wait until you're really, really stressed and you are kind of in a crisis situation to utilize our services. Utilize our services whenever you feel like you just need that break, whenever you want that little tune-up for your mental health and emotional well-being. Um, some of the topics that we cover, as I mentioned, I do workshops um, on mental health and emotional well-being, but I have other specialists in my office who do workshops on a variety of other topics. They are listed here. We have a specialist who is an expert on alcohol and other drugs. If you have questions about alcohol use, maybe yours or someone else's, maybe you're curious about something specific, maybe you're in recovery and you need some resources, you can meet with our programs manager for that topic. We have an expert on sexual health and healthy relationships. If you have questions about pregnancy, STI, safe sex practices, healthy communication. It can be a romantic relationship. It can be a friendship. It can be a family relationship. And then we also have um, a registered dietitian as well. If you have questions about your diet, your nutrition, your body image. And then like I said, I meet with students about their emotional well-being. Any questions about our services, the topics we cover before I talk about resiliency? We good? You with me? Yeah, okay. So in case you need our information, it's here. Our website is studentwellness.uci.edu. If you want a refresher on anything that I talked about, if you want to make an appointment to use our massage chairs, or you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation appointment, um, this is our website. Our consultations are also confidential as well. So just think of it as a safe space to ask questions where you um, might need to get that information by making an appointment with your physician or going to a clinic. We can offer those, we can answer those questions in a nice, safe, confidential space. 
And then um, if you want to keep up with our events and our offerings, we are on Instagram. UCI Student Wellness is our tag. Okay, so we talked about our topics. And if there's no questions, I'm going to move forward and talk about resiliency. So what is resilience? Does anybody have an idea of what that means? What do you, comes to mind when you hear the term resilience? This is the part of, yeah, go ahead. Uh, handling challenging situations. Yes. Well. Yeah, handling challenging situations. Well, definitely. What else comes to mind when we hear the term resilience? One more person, give me an idea of what it means to them. Yeah, bouncing back from something that gets you down. That's right, dealing with challenging situations. All of you are talking about resilience. Those are all great definitions of what resilience means. Um, bounce back is exactly what this definition says. But yeah, if anything that happens in life, all of us in our life cycle are going to experience challenges whether they be losing somebody, whether they be getting out of a breakup, whether that be failing a class, you know, having some sort of accident or maybe a family member or a friend having some sort of incident, right? Throughout life, it is inevitable that we're gonna deal with some painful experiences, some trauma, some adversity. But it's really how we cope with that experience. That is the resiliency piece. What happens after that traumatic experience, what happens to that accident. Um, and there are really healthy ways that we can cope with that so we can get to the path towards healing and have a faster recovery. So I love this quote when I think of resiliency. Uh, it says, dear little me, you took on so much that was not yours to carry. We can set it down now whenever you're ready. So oftentimes when something difficult or when a challenge happens in our life, we feel like we need to carry that around with us everywhere we go. Or maybe that one event defines who we are. But the truth is, is we are so much more than one event that happens to us. We are resilient beings, right? We can bounce back. We can put it down when we're ready. So just know that all of us are able to be resilient. We don't have to carry everything that we've dealt through. So some qualities of highly resilient people. So what the research shows is folks who have gone through really traumatic events, maybe like veterans of war or folks who have dealt with um, chronic trauma or grief, um, all share the same characteristics, right? And these are some of them. So they're able to recognize and manage their own feelings. They're not bottling those feelings down, but they're able to name, I feel upset, I feel sad, right? I'm hurting. They're able to understand other people's feelings, right? It's empathy. So when you look at someone, you're able to say, I can tell that that person is having a hard time right, they're experiencing a negative emotion or they're experiencing a positive emotion. Um, they can have healthy and respectful relationships, right, they're able to sort of cope and um, lean on their support system. They have a sense of independence and self-worth, not codependent on others. They're able to problem solve and make decisions and they have a sense of purpose and meaning in life. Just know that if you're reading these things and you're like, mm, this isn't really me, right? This is not something that you're born with. It's not like, oh, I don't have these characteristics, so I must not be resilient. Not at all. All of these traits can be learned, right? With enough work, with self-work, with having awareness, mindfulness, all of us can be resilient and adopt these traits. If you're like, hmm, I don't know if I'm resilient. We're all here, we've all gone through the pandemic, 
right? COVID was difficult for everybody. It did not discriminate. Student, elderly, baby, wherever job you worked at, whatever you did, COVID had an impact on all of us. The fact that we're here, right, in the science library, studying or whatever we're doing on social media, writing emails, whatever we're doing, the fact that we're all here and looking at each other, hi there, you here for the Resil Resiliency Workshop? Yeah, come on in. Um, means that we're resilient. We went through a national public health crisis together, right? And so if there's something, go ahead and have a seat. There's something and you're like, oh, I can't think of anything that I've gone through. We've all gone through something major, right? That'll go down in history. Okay. Just like with anything, the more practice and the more time we invest in something, the stronger that habit becomes. It's like a muscle. The more that we work it out, the stronger we become. That's exactly how resiliency is. The more we practice these traits, the more that we practice these strategies, we'll be more resilient. So how do we become resilient, right? How do we get towards the path of healing, towards get through recovery? There's two strategies that I want you to take away from today. And the first is accept, accept what happened to us, right? Not live in denial, and then also reflect on that experience. So let's talk first about acceptance. Typically, when something happens to us and we don't accept it, and we're like in kind of in denial about it, we bottle up our emotions, yeah? Raise your hand if you've ever bottled anything up. Yeah, I'm sure more people in this room, I know I have. What happens to a two liter, two liter bottle of Coke when you shake it up and then you open it? It explodes. It explodes. That's what will happen to us when we just bottle, 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 right? We're like, everything is great, I live this perfect, TikTok, Instagram life, where I just post the best version of myself. I'm not sad, I'm not scared, I'm not ashamed, right? But we know that beneath those feelings, it's like the iceberg, there's so much more underneath. And so as a, a coping strategy, right, we bottle up. That will catch up to us at the end. So instead of doing that, instead of shoving feelings down, pushing others away, pretending like I'm fine, I'm fine, we accept what happens. Do we think that's difficult or do we think that's pretty easy? Who finds it difficult to be able to accept that something negative happened to them? Who finds it easy? Yeah, people are like, nah, kind of, it depends. Yeah, for most of us, it is difficult, right? Especially in the moment. Just know that it's really normal if that's you. Hey there, oh, hi, Alan, come on in. Hi, come on in. Oh, do you wanna have a seat this way? <laughs> Thanks. Um, so just know that it's really normal and it can be adaptive to bottle things up in the moment. Sometimes we just need to push it down to get through to the next thing. You're like, I can't deal with this right now. I have to go to class. I have to take an exam or I have to go to work, right? But eventually we want to slowly open that two liter bottle of Coke because we don't want things to bottle up too long and explode. Okay, second strategy. So we talked about acceptance. Once we've accepted that a hardship has occurred, now let's talk about reflection. How do we reflect on that? Only when you're ready and only truly you will know when you're ready for that time of reflection. Again, sometimes it can be really hard. Sometimes you're like, look, I can't deal with this right now. Right? I had a student come in um, for a consult with me and she just got out of a breakup and I was like, okay, how do you want to process it? And she's like, well, I want a journal, but I just can't do it this week. I have my family coming, I have exams, I have this. And I'm like, great. The fact that you know that you can't do it this week is really strong awareness. When can you do it? So we talked about, okay, next week, 
Her week is pretty free. She doesn't have a lot of commitments. She's going to set aside some time to journal, right? So find a time where you feel safe, when you feel ready, that you can really sit down and go through some of that reflection, right? What happened? How did I feel when that happened? How do I feel now? What impact is this going to have on me? A lot of folks um, can do this in many different venues. It can be when they're walking. It can be when they're sitting on the beach. A lot of students tell me they're, when they drive, they just feel like their mind is clear and they can think about things then. Some students have told me when they're in the shower, they feel like that's a really good space to reflect. There's lots of different ways. We don't have to like sit you know, in an empty field and contemplate the world, right? There are lots of different ways where we can spend some time reflecting. Just know that it's very common also to minimize our experience. So maybe something really hard did happen to us, right? But we say, you know what? But Susie Jo, my roommate, she's, you know, her mom is going through this. So my thing isn't that bad, right? It's normal, but just know we want to move away from comparing our experience to someone else's, right? Because then we minimize, we invalidate ourselves to be able to say, look, I'm really sad because I lost this job. I'm really sad because, you know, I didn't get invited to this party, whatever it is. Know that your feelings are valid. We don't want to say, I'm really sad, but you know what? Don't be sad. You're fine. You're this, you're that. No, reflection is accepting our experience, validating our feelings, and not comparing our experience, experiences to others. Talked about our social, okay. In order to do this, in order for some reflection time, we want to have a strong foundation of coping skills, okay? And that's because, hi, oh, is this for us? And that's because we don't want to sit down and journal and then have all of these emotions and then not have anything to do with them, right? We don't want to unpack our whole bag and then not be able to pack it back up again. Who helps us pack up our bag? Our family, our friends, our support system. Maybe it's our self-care routine, right? Maybe it's going on that walk. Maybe it's playing with our dog or our cat at home. Right, so just know that if we're gonna sit down, hi there, come on in. Are you here for the resiliency workshop? Okay. Um, yes, so if we're going to spend some time reflecting, unpacking our bag, we wanna have some skills, some tools to pack it back up again. Okay. I don't know why my slides are not. There we go. Okay. So another strategy for reflecting is changing our perspective on something. So sometimes when enough time has gone by, we're really able to look back on an experience in a new way. Okay, so here's an example. If somebody breaks up with us, and in that moment, we're like, oh gosh, I'm gonna miss this person. Like they were my best friend. I'm gonna miss this relationship, right? We're gonna have all of these feelings. That's okay and that's normal, right? But maybe after a week goes by, two weeks go by, we're like, hey, I've actually been doing great this past two weeks. I've been able to get more things done. I've been able to you know, do more self-care. We're able to reframe that breakup and say, I actually think that that was a great thing. Right, that was a positive experience. So sometimes with some reflection and some time, we're able to reframe, put on a different pair of glasses and see things differently. A good way to reframe, to reflect, is I mentioned journaling. Um, a strategy that I like to share with students who come to me about this is to do pages, okay? So what that means is you set a specific time every day, it could be before you, wake, before you go to sleep, first thing when you wake up, and literally stream of consciousness, just write down all of the things that are going through your head. Knowing no one is gonna read what you're writing, you can burn it, you can shred it afterwards, right? But without worrying about grammar, or spelling, just write. Free write everything. Go back, read what you wrote, 
you will be surprised at what you read about yourself. When we give our brains permission to just go and we're not judging ourselves, we're not overthinking anything, there are some really meaningful lessons that can come out. So if you're confused about a specific situation, if you feel like you need to process something, reflect something, try this exercise, right? Just free write, spend five minutes, boom, just writing everything out, reading it, see what happens. Has anyone tried this already? No, okay, yeah. So something to try. Another way to cultivate reflection is um, another exercise called a forgiveness letter. Oftentimes when we go through an event that was difficult, other people are involved. And we tend to blame other people or we are upset with other people or we harbor these negative feelings, right? Back to my relationship example. Maybe you had a lot of negative feelings towards that person, towards that ex, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever. Another exercise is to write a forgiveness letter. It doesn't mean you're gonna mail the letter and actually give it to this person, right? It just means that you are writing a letter as if you're talking to them. You know, maybe you got in an argument with your mom and you're really mad at her and you wanna get some of those feelings out. Try the reflection letter, try the forgiveness letter and just write down, dear mom, you made me really mad when you told me I couldn't do this. It hurt my feelings when you did this. Write out what you would say to that person. People who are experiencing grief, I also give this exercise to. If you've recently lost someone in your life that you loved, or it could even be like a pet, right? Maybe your dog or your cat just passed away and you're really grieving that loss and it's difficult for you to get over that, try the forgiveness letter. Right? Again, because this person is past, we're not gonna give it to them, but it's a good way to get your feelings out and cope with that loss and work through that grief. Anyone tried doing a forgiveness letter or a goodbye letter before? No. Okay, so another exercise to try, hopefully a tool for you. As we close, I just wanna share some takeaways. I love this quote from Nelson Mandela, which is, I never lose, I either win or learn. So next time you're feeling sorry for yourself, next time you're feeling really sad about a certain event or a situation, think about what did I learn? What did I gain from this? What kind of person am I now that I've gone through this? The good thing about going through a traumatic, difficult event is that we always come out stronger. We always come out a better version of ourselves, right? So have pride in that. Being able to look back and be like, wow, I went through my parents' divorce and it was so hard, but I can handle situations so much better because of it, right? Now I know what I want in my partner. Now I know the type of person I am in a difficult time. Yeah, just experiences like that. That's just an example, but there's so many things that we go through. Any questions or anything before we talk about resources and I wrap up? Thoughts, feedback? No? Yeah. Is there one uh, one technique that you found to be the most helpful personally? I love the pages. Um, Just journaling, like free write. Even when I'm not really going through a difficult time, but sometimes I just have like five minutes of free time, I will put on like my favorite playlist. It doesn't have any words. It's like the lo-fi beats on Spotify. (laughs) If anybody wants to hear it, yeah, Alan's like, yes. Um, And I literally just write, and I don't even think about a topic. I just write what comes to mind, right? And like I get so many great ideas or I work out so many feelings when I look back and I read those pages. Yeah. Any other questions, thoughts? So before uh, we close, I just, in your mind's eye, you know, you don't have to share it, but I just want you to think about one thing that you can do today to flex that resiliency muscle. Whether it be pages to change your perspective on something, whether it be that letter, whether it just be like, hey, I actually went through a lot and I never gave myself credit for it. 
you know, I failed the class last quarter and I'm still here, like I'm pretty resilient. Think about what experiences you have gone through in your life. And again, we've all gone through them, right? We've all gone through our hard, difficult times. Think about how those times have shaped who you are now. What did you learn from them, right? What you can continue to learn from them. If you can't think of something to do after this, my intention, my offering for you is to cultivate a growth mindset, right? Which is being able to view challenges and failures as opportunities. Rather than this happened to me, woe is me, think of it as this happened to me and I'm stronger. This is an opportunity for me to improve myself. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the resilience piece. Are there any questions about any of the exercises or anything else before I talk about resources? Okay, cool. So as I mentioned, we are at the top here, Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion. Um, our information is here. This is our website, that's our Instagram handle. If you have further questions, wanna schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation, any follow-up, this is my email if you ever um, want to reach out. Other resources we have on campus that I wanted to share with you. In addition to the Center for Student Wellness, which is us, we have the Counseling Center where you can receive short-term um, short brief therapy. Or we have a psychiatry wing of our student health center if you need to get connected to a psychiatrist. And then we also have CARE, which is a resource for our students who have experienced sexual violence. All of the resources on the left in purple are here at UCI. They are for you. They're not going to cost you a dime. Again, before you graduate, take a look at the referral, at the resources you have. Okay. If you have questions about our specific department, we have two of our peer health educators here, Alan and Eliza, and they um, can give you kind of a student perspective. If you have any questions about getting involved, anything we have to offer, you could even be like, hey, why should I come by your office? You can ask them. I'm sure they'll give you millions of reasons. Right. On the right, we have community resources. So this is the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. If you or you know is ever in a mental health crisis, Instead of calling 911 on your phone, you can dial 988. Instead of being connected to a police officer, you'll get connected to a mental health professional, right? Someone like myself, and they will help w talk you through your mental health crisis. They might even dispatch a mental health team to where you are. We also have the crisis text line. This I find students um, are comfortable using because you can just text. You don't have to like talk to somebody. So you can text COURAGE in the body of the text to 741741 and just say, hey, um, I think I'm depressed or my friend is thinking about hurting themselves. What should I do? And you can text back and forth with a mental health professional. The resources on the right are completely free and they're confidential. So if your parents or someone pays your phone bill, it's going to say unknown right on the line. It's not going to say crisis lifeline, right? It's going to say unknown. There are multiple languages. They're not going to ask you for any money. And they are available 24 hours a day, right? 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock in the morning. You can always call the suicide prevention lifeline or text the crisis text line. Any questions about our resources or anything that we covered? No? Well, thank you everybody so much. I appreciate you having me. Here's our contact information if you need it. Take care.